Hello everyone. This video is about player-owned houses and how to set them up efficiently. I remember back when I started doing construction, I was always a bit confused about my house and my current player-owned house is a little bit crazy. It doesn't have any real setup. It's just sort of rooms whenever I needed them, I put them in. Uh, and actually, if you want to see it, I've got a full house tour in the uh, description. I've got a link to the video there. But anyway, on to the rest of the video. First off, um, there are a few basic rooms that I highly recommend having near your entrance portal, just things that you use a lot, or at least that you use more than other things. In general, I don't really use my player and house much. But the things that I do use, so first off, here we have the chapel. And I have this one north of the entrance because when you just teleport in, normally you're facing north and that's easier. If you plan on doing all of your prayer training or you're going for like 200 mil prayer and you want to be super efficient, the best place to have it is one east of the entrance portal and you want to have it facing south so that way you can run in um, and you you light one of the burners on your way in and then light the other one and go then go to the altar. I mean I guess if you're really being that super efficient for prayer you probably won't have runners anyway so it doesn't even matter but uh, that's that. Then you would want to have a quest hall and portal chambers. Those are really great for teleporting. The quest hall, it always used to be great for um, for training prayer when you had to charge glories manually, uh, like by actually going to the Heroes Guild because it's an infinite glory teleport. But now it's not as important because you, most people just use rings of dueling now anyway. Uh, it's just nice to have those. So that's the quest hall. And then, okay, so I mentioned the portal chambers, and there are seven different teleports that they can go to, but there are only three portals that you can put in per chamber. So if you want to make the most of it, you should have two or possibly three teleport chambers. And the setup I have here, I don't actually use. Uh, I When I was doing my player and house, I didn't think about the portal chambers much until I was mostly done setting it up. So I, I ended up putting my portal chambers like way in my dungeon, and they're very awkward to get to. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Nowadays, portal chambers aren't even the most useful thing, but it's nice to have and uh, it's probably the best option for a player and house. So I've got the two portal chambers here, uh, one north and one south of the menagerie. And uh, I have, uh, well, since I mentioned before there are seven teleports, I left out the Yanil teleport because it actually teleports you to the watchtower and for most of the places in Yanil that you want to go to, you're better off just home teleporting uh, because, yeah, it's just better than going down through the watchtower. Okay, so as you can see, both of the portal chambers are on either side of the menagerie, and that's the other thing. The menagerie is a very useful one. Uh, not only is it useful for its effect um, for holding pets, but it's also very useful for the obelisk here to charge summoning, and that's mostly what I use mine for on a regular basis. So um, you've got your altar and your mini obelisk and then your teleport. So uh, yeah, it's just really convenient. Next is the workshop, and the only really commonly used thing in here is the armor repair stand. Uh, so, yeah, that's that. Nothing really to say. Um, continuing on. Okay, so that pretty much sums up all of the useful rooms that I like having right by the entrance portal. And now, uh, I'm not going to go completely into this because I've got them all listed in the description, but I've got a list of rooms that are really useful but you don't need constant access to them so the location wherever you put them is up to you it doesn't really matter where they go uh, so first off the by far the most useful in my opinion is the costume room and what a lot of people uh, don't really use often when they do construction or at least not that i've seen is flat packs and flat packs are amazing for the costume room because you can completely upgrade all of the furniture slots using flat packs, and you don't need the construction levels to do them. So, for those of you who don't know what flat packs are, it's pretty much furniture that you can trade and then set up while you're in building mode. So, in my inventory here, I have all the mahogany items for the costume room, and there are six different items. Um, these actually aren't all the highest level things. You can get a magic cape rack or a marble magic wardrobe, um, but I've just got all the mahogany versions here, and the mahogany versions don't store quite as many items for the cape rack and the magic wardrobe, but they're 
uh, they're quite good still, they'll hold most of your stuff. And the best thing is that all six of them all together cost under 2k cash total. Um, I mean, it might go up right after this video, but it'll probably go back down. And either way, it's very inexpensive, and you, again, you don't need any construction level to put in flat packs. Um, so anyway, I've rambled on a little bit longer than I expected about that room. Um, besides the costume room, there are a few others that I've listed in the description. The study for the statue of Damarok and a telescope if you do shooting stars. Um, and yeah, a couple others, but you can check the description if you're interested in more of the other rooms. I've also listed all of the items that you need to upgrade everything in there, so all of the planks, all of the miscellaneous supplies, all of that, which I think should be quite helpful because that way you don't have to go on RSWiki or some other thing and uh, add together all of the different supplies that you want to upgrade everything. So um, hopefully this will be helpful for people who are starting out construction or are planning out their houses. I know that when I was doing it I got a bit overwhelmed by all the stuff and I sort of wish I had arranged my house better when I was doing it, but I'd rather not spend a ton of money and rearrange it now. So. Yeah, that's pretty much everything, so thanks for watching. I hope this video was helpful. Thumbs up if you enjoyed it, um, and thanks for watching.